Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight or this afternoon or morning, whenever you're watching this. Uh, this is the Seattle Children's Autism Center Conversations about Autism. And I'm so pleased to be announcing some panelists this evening to honor Autism Acceptance Month, April 2024. Um, so let me just uh, say who I am first, and then we'll get you, get you um, a chance to meet our wonderful panelists. My name is Katrina Davis, and I'm a family advocate at Seattle Children's uh, Seattle Children's Emergency Department, and I also work many years at the Autism Center, and this event is sponsored and brought to you by Seattle Children's Autism Center. We have a monthly series called Conversations About Autism, and this month we are celebrating autistic lived experience, and we have an amazing group of panelists here tonight. Um, I'm going to introduce them in a minute, but I just want to say again, welcome. All these sessions that uh, we do each month on the third Thursday are recorded. So we'll put a link in the chat and you can go to the uh, autism or the Seattle Children's Conversations about Autism website and get a link to past recordings. So again, welcome and let's get started with our amazing panel. So tonight it's about lived experiences of our autistic from our autistic community and we have a number of panelists and what I'll do tonight is I will just go through and ask each panelist to introduce themselves and then we have about four or five questions we're going to be asking tonight. The first question is um, just tell us a little bit about yourself because I want you to introduce yourself. And then could you tell us how old you were when you received your autism diagnosis? And um, we've got about one minute each. And I think I'm going to start with Franco. Go ahead, Franco. All right. <clears throat> I'm Franco. Nice to meet you all. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a peer mentor that uh, drives um, <clears throat> A low functioning, <clears throat> a low functioning autistic to his volunteer site and t supervises him and takes him home. That's my job. I uh, live in Lake City. I double from there to Vashon Island, which is where my mom lives. I, <clears throat> yeah, that's um, pretty much all I feel like we need to talk about right there. About Franco, myself. how old were you when you were diagnosed with autism as an autistic? Uh, I was seven. Seven, <clears throat> seven years old. Okay. Yeah. Franco, um, I want to, I've heard Franco speak before and he's got lots of talents and skills we're going to hear about tonight, hopefully. And I love that you as an autistic person are caring and helping another autistic person who has sounds like higher support needs than you, but um, you're connecting with this person and that's absolutely fantastic and frankly beautiful. I am also the proud parent of a 24 year old autistic young man. And I wish, and I hope someday my son has a Franco. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go on to our next um, panelist. And by the way, folks, autistic people, right? You met one person with autism. You met one person with autism. Tonight, we're we're hearing from people from with a wide range of experience and background, and um, level of support needs and level of communication needs, as you will see. So, um, Morgan, why don't you and Tark take it away next? So, um, tell us a little bit about Tark and Morgan, yourself, Morgan, and then uh, when Tark was diagnosed. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. So. This is Tarek Carmi Jones. Um, he is 25 years old, limited verbal, um, autistic. Uh, he talks through facilitated communication, so we prepared our answers here um, just for the sake of time and smoothness. Uh, we live uh, in Washington. Uh, he lives on a farm on five acres, and he's got goats and chickens and dogs and a garden and tons of stuff that keep him busy. Uh, those are his responsibilities every day, and he works out every day. Uh, he likes to swim, hot tub, basically anything with water. Watches YouTube, listens to music, looks at pictures. He goes on walks, bike rides, plays basketball, and he loves to take evening drives. Did you want me to introduce myself too? Absolutely, Morgan. Tell oh. us about yourself. You are a huge, important factor in Tarek's life. Go ahead. Well, I am Morgan Joe. Um, I started working with Tarek when he was in the seventh or eighth grade. Uh, they hired me, which was originally going to be for a summer to work on some behaviors he was having. And we had a lot of success. And now next month, I will have been working with him for 11 years. Um, if, if there was an audience, you'd hear smiles and claps and gasps. And I see Artie smiling. Morgan, that's a big deal as speaking as a parent to have that level of consistency and support and knowing a little bit about you too and how much support you provide. And Tark, the um, 
the connection you have with Morgan, it's really fantastic. Yeah, um, I, for, I forgot one of the other things was T was diagnosed at two. Um, he was yes. diagnosed at two. Um, his mom is very uh, efficient and stays ahead of the game. So she had an idea before he had a formal diagnosis and he was, he started uh, some early, inter uh, early intervention in his childhood and stuff like that. But yeah, it was about two years old. Excellent. And where does Tarek live with, I know he lives on a farm with goats. Who else? <laughs> oh, he lives with his, he lives with his mom and dad. Okay. You might've said that. Sorry. Wonderful. Yeah, Thank you. He literally lives with his mom and dad and I am here. T and I are together every, every day. Thank you, Morgan, and thank you, Tarek. Um, Tarek might be using his assisted, his talk, to, sorry, text to talk tonight, but Morgan is also his voice. Um, okay, uh, Miss Sydney, can you go next and tell us about a little bit about yourself and how old you were when you were diagnosed? Sure, Katrina. Hi, my name is Sydney Krebsbach, and I am a self advocate who lives in Cheney, Washington, and. I work for the University of Washington Echo Autism as a part of their Orange Cohort. And I also work for SNAP. And I'm one of the two co-chairs for the Washington State Developmental Disabilities Council. And I sit on the Spokane County Developmental Disabilities Advisory Board. Wow. <laughs> I know a little bit about Sydney and her work. And people, I have to tell you, this woman is amazing. She's activated, she's engaged, and she's an outstanding advocate. Um, Sydney, tell us a bit about your diagnosis experience. Sure. So I was born with autism, but my parents didn't know what was wrong with me. They knew I was delayed in my social and my communications activities. And right after we moved from Renton, Washington to Juneau, Alaska, we got they enrolled me into a special preschool for special need kids. And also when I was in elementary school, I was sneaking out to see a speech pathologist and a language pathologist and a early intervention child care. Mm -hmm. And by the time I was eight years old, I was formally diagnosed with autism in order to get, get services in Alaska. Excellent. Thank you, Sydney. And um, I love that you were sneaking out to get therapy. I love that that phrase. Um, <laughs> but I, I also wanted to say that Sydney um, is, has really um, just worked so hard in her career as an advocate and is really shining right now. Some of these jobs she has are significant roles in our developmental disability in the community. And and when you said that your parents found out what was wrong with you, I would say that, and uh, just to say that um, there's nothing wrong with you, you are beautifully perfect. Um, and uh, But I get what you were trying to say. I just wanted to throw that out there, Sydney. Um, okay, Our, we have, next we have Artie and, and Sam, and, and uh, they'll tell you a little bit about themselves. Go ahead, Artie and Sam. Your name is Sam. I live in North Seattle. 15 years old, doing my Associates of Arts from North Seattle College, which takes up most of my time as I type one letter at a time using my right index finger. I was an immigrant from India, and I was diagnosed at Seattle Children's. I was about three years old, and I can still remember that summer morning. And um, Artie, tell us about yourself, because now we, we know a little bit about Sam. Uh, I'm Arti Bhatia, and I'm Sam's mom. Uh, I'm also his primary caregiver. Excellent. Thank you. And thank you for being here tonight, helping uh, Sam with his communication advice. Sam, it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, and I, I couldn't hear quite hear the end. Did we tell, did we, he was, Sam, you were diagnosed at Seattle Children's Autism Center, and you told us a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Um, and I think what I'm going to do now, just stick with Sam, and I'm going to ask the next question and go backwards, okay? So, Sam, uh, my next question for you um, you know, this being April, right? And we, we used to call it Autism Awareness, but we've moved to acceptance, as we should. And it's Autism Acceptance Month. And what does that mean to you, Sam, as an autistic I'm man? Autistic adult with high Sorry. Thank I'm you. An autistic adult with high support needs. I am still a highly opinionated individual who started communicating at age 17. I think we need to go beyond assumptions about autism and take this month to unlearn and relearn many things about us. I want people to take a moment 
to listen to our lived experiences and think through the words you use and how you talk about us. Nothing about us without us. Ask us. We live this every day, and non-speakers like me who found our voice later in life have seen it all. Learn about apraxia, assistive tech, both low and high tech. Meet autistics with all support needs. There is so much we don't know about autism. Let's not pretend to know it all. I am a dysregulated, anxious autistic adult with low IQ on paper and go figure. Sam, thank you so much. Wow, how um, insightful. And you have so much to share with the world. And I'm just, thank you so much for, I can't believe, you know, and a lot of us, you, you just, you started communicating at age 17. I know a lot of parents and autistic folks watching this now are really curious about your, your journey. And uh, congratulations and, and working so hard. I'm sure you had to work so hard to get to that point. And um, thanks for just being you and being here today. Um, okay, I'm going to go to Sydney since we're working backwards. Sydney, got the question for you. What does Autism Acceptance Month mean to you? So basically, Autism Acceptance Month being let all the individuals who are on the autism spectrum celebrate and be proud of who we are and learn that we we've overcome so much while we were growing up and that we are celebrating this month of being proud of who we are. Thank you, Sydney. <laughs> that should be a like a billboard. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you so much. And I and I hope that you're proud of who you are and you're and all those folks that love and care for you. And just uh, thank you for those wise words. Um, okay, Tarek and Morgan, why don't you go next? The question is, uh, what is autism acceptance? Uh, yeah, this, was, uh, this was a question that um, I never, T and I never really talked about. Tarek and I never uh, talked about much, but um, he said, I, he, he said, I, I honestly have, never, have not thought much about what it means to me as far as the month itself. Um, I definitely, when I realize it's that month, I acknowledge it. And like all awareness uh, months, I it was my fault when I was talking about it. I said awareness, not acceptance. I don't really know if that would have changed what he said, but I don't think so. But it's written as awareness. Uh, he said, I think that there are great, that, are, that, are, that there are symbols and months that prompt a dialogue and people that are spreading awareness and knowledge of different issues, uh, being autistic and regularly being out in the community. Um, having struggles with communicating with people independently. Um, I also have other challenges that come with being autistic. So my everyday life is an autism awareness, but I definitely appreciate that there is a month dedicated uh, to people bringing awareness. Excellent. Thank you, Tarek. And Tarek, if you if you feel like it, Morgan, too, if, if you want it while others are talking, if there's anything you want to say about the word acceptance, Go ahead and do that. Otherwise, thank you for those wise words and insightful insight based on your experience. Yeah, awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, Franco, why don't you go next? All right. To be honest, it's kind of the same as Morgan and Tart. I, I didn't, before the email, I didn't really know that Autism Awareness or, or Acceptance Month or Appreciation was, um, <clears throat> was basically like, they never really talked about it in any of my circles. My mom never really explained it to me growing up. And and even, um, yeah, none of my circles did. With all that said, I guess I, um, for those who, who that is important to, like I get, I can have, I have a certain idea that why, um, why it's uh, great to have that or kind of, um, in value to have a month dedicating to whatever it, a bit when it comes to able sexual or racial lines. So, yeah, I um for those who do for those who have thought about it all this time, it's nice that you have a month for you for that. So, that's my answer. Thank you, Franco. It is indeed nice, and it it, it uh. We went from uh, awareness to acceptance, and, and we'll have to talk. Maybe we, if we have time again, we can talk about what the next word should be if we're right. evolving in this, the way we think about autism, the way we view and treat people that are autistic, and the equity and inclusion that we strive for. Um, okay. 
All right, now we're gonna go back to you, Franco. We're doing the circle thing. So the next question number three is what support did you get growing up and how did you feel that support helped you become the person you are today? Yeah, I've, um, <clears throat> I really thought about this one. For me, throughout my teen, from my teenhood up to now, like basically since I was in high school, my college lives, and even post, like in high school, I had, um, I was in the Special Olympics. Um, <clears throat> I went to Shoreline Community College because we thought the services might accommodate my, um, <clears throat> my disability being processing delay better. Um, the next, and after I graduated there, I went to, to Bellevue College, which has the Occupational Life Skills Program, which is designed for um, neurodivergence and, dis and students with disability, including the symptoms of autism. Mm -hmm. I then went into, <clears throat> then I moved into an apartment tied to a program by, um, <clears throat> called Thrive, which is uh, also for students with disability introduced by Ben. In fact, Ben Wall basically has introduced me to every um, circle I could find regarding the uh, movement, including this one. And there is Enigma, Thrive, where I am now, <clears throat> Rither, which he works for, and he even got me the job I'm working at now, being my peer mentor. So, yeah, that's my... Uh, <clears throat> So yeah, that's my history of um, <clears throat> my support system regarding my autism. And of course, my mom. My mom uh, was a big guidance for me. Growing yes. Up. Thank you, Franco. Um, are you done? I'm sorry I interrupted you. Yeah, sure. That's um, my support, my family, and uh, all these circles I've been a part of. Thank you so much. And I, I will to make a plug for it. Franco's talking about a program called Aspiring Youth here in the Seattle the north of the northwest area and aspiring youth is part of Rither Child Center. And um, Ben Wall is the person he's talking about. He's a very dedicated advocate and has changed a lot of lives and cares deeply about our autistic community. Thank Shout you. out to Ben. Um, okay, and uh, thank you, thank you so much. And I, before we move on, I just want to say that Sydney and another advocate named John Lemus helped us come up with these questions. These are not my questions. These are their questions. Okay, thanks, mm -hmm. Sydney. Um, all right. Okay, how about we go with uh, Tarek and Morgan now? So, uh, do you want me to repeat the question or you got it? I got it. And, and uh, I asked T about if the word, if the difference of it being acceptance versus awareness made a difference. Um, he just wanted to add that he thinks that, sorry, I have this all typed out on a phone. Um, one of the biggest things that would help with acceptance if people learned that every autistic person is unique to themselves and not all the same. And autism does not mean an intellectual impairment. And I would I add know. one of my favorite quotes that I've seen is that autism is not a processing error, but a different <laughs> operating system. <laughs> uh, I've seen the t-shirt. That's awesome. Autism is not an operating error. It's a what is it? operating system. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Morgan. And thanks, Tarek. Yeah, go ahead. No, go on with your next question. He said he had a lot of support. He was very lucky uh, growing up. He had everything that he needed. Um, he had early intervention. He had speech therapists, behaviorists. He had ABA, paraeducators, psychologists, therapists, and probably more that he's not thinking of. Um, so each and every one of them has helped shape who he is today. Some are still with him. Yeah, uh, besides his parents, uh, Tarek has two of us. Uh, one 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 person that's been with him since a kid. She works with him once uh, every Thursday, um, and then me. I would be the other person. Uh, um, and I would also add that uh, even some of the bad. Bad ones, ones that didn't work out. Not, not everybody's always going to be good. We've had some questionable paraeducators and things like that. And uh, T would agree that uh, even those um, situations uh, helped shape who he is when he had to overcome some of the people that weren't doing the things that were best for him even. It always hasn't been perfect support. And uh, he, always, he always gets through it and he always overcomes his problems and, and that it's all shaped him into who he is. Mm -hmm says that he is still in shape with the person that he wants to be. 
Um, oh, and he said support is very important and being able to fully trust the people that support you and having your goals and beliefs align with them is also very important. Excellent. And, you know, um, this would be one of those questions I would ask you, Tarek, and I think I've heard you say the answer, but I'd love to know how you advocate for yourself when it wasn't working well. Maybe we can we can hold that question until the end, because I, I know you know how to advocate for yourself despite a communication challenge. Yeah. OK, um, Sydney, do you want to go next? Why don't you go next? <laughs> sure. So. I was very fortunate to have all the support I needed when I was growing up. I had my family, my sisters, and I've had a, my tutor and my IEP teacher when I was in high school. And also I had my peers and mentors and all my colleagues around me who have shaped me into being the self-advocate who I am today. And also, um, I am learning and still growing more as a person <laughs> with autism. Oh, how humble. Your cup is not full. That's a good line, isn't it? Um, well, Sydney, um, thank you for telling us about that. And, and I, I know you've had lots of people in, in your life that have supported you. And I'm hearing a lot of different support. So I'm, well, I'm going to hear from Artie and Sam next. And then we're going to just uh, go on to the next question. But I do I do hear a lot of support. And um we're going to talk about that at the end. You know what? Thank you, Sydney. And how about we go to Sam and Artie? Go ahead. I am a classic autistic adult. I still get anxious, get fixated on things even today. First few years were spent just figuring how to remove some of my symptoms and challenges. A lot of focus was given on hours of therapies that did not help me in hindsight. After I started communicating, I have stopped participating in things that are not helpful. If I have to look back at my last 19 years, I would say the most neurodiversity affirming teachers, staff, therapists, case managers, friends, family kept me sane. My middle school teacher, Jennifer, who believed I was smart. My high school teacher, Christine, who tested me and advocated for a diploma path. Connections Academy that gave me the accommodations to complete my credit requirements and North Seattle College for giving me more post-secondary opportunities. Occupational therapy always helped me. I enjoyed horse riding and few camps in the area that looked at my strengths and beyond my dysregulation and bad days. And above all, a mom who was strong enough to change her ideas about autism and let me lead the way. Lovely. Um, insightful, articulate words, Sam. Thank you. Very stirring. And um, wow. So I just want to say one thing as I heard all your different levels of support that you received over the years and what helped you become the person you are today. You four had a lot of support and a lot of scaffolding and a lot of people who leaned in and cared and didn't give up. I just want to give a shout out and us to keep in mind those people, those autistic people who don't have that and how the importance of us advocating legislatively in every way we can that there's access to all these different supports you're getting from speech to OT to ABA to teachers at school that understand you to IEP programs. Not each one of those services relates to every single person, but those who need those different kinds of services should have access so they become the best they can be. Um, so thank you. And I also wanna give a shout out to those people those autistic people who aren't able to communicate. They communicate through their actions and words every day by the way they live their life, but they might not have the ability to, to keyboard their thoughts. And that and they relied heavily on the, the caregivers and parents that are around them. And we need to uh, acknowledge and listen to those parents on behalf of that person and always try to find ways to hear that autistic person's voice as well. Okay, all right, so support, that's a big one. That's how we define autism now. We use levels of support. We don't say higher low functioning, we say, levels of support. And that's smart because it's it, autism isn't just higher low functioning. It's everything in between as we were seeing today uh, beautifully. Okay. Uh, number, the question number four, and let's start with Artie and Sam. Um, Sam, can you tell us um, what advice, uh, sorry, what advice would you give to other autistic people? Communication, communication, and communication. Everything else will follow. 
Get access to A C as early as possible. Work with people who presume confidence. Get access to age appropriate education so you don't play catch up like me. Don't let them tell you that you can get educated only if you sit quietly or behave a certain way. You know, a textbook on error says so. Once you start communicating functionally, take charge of your present and future. You are capable. Don't let them say otherwise. Only be around people who can support you. And remember, parents, experts, and educators can be wrong. This is why you need communication and education. These are human rights. Let's go grab them. Assume people mean to help you when they don't know how. Go for that letter board, iPad, ASL, whatever you prefer. Speak your mind. Don't be embarrassed about getting support. More support doesn't mean less worthy. Change the narrative. Thank you, Sam. Ending that with change the narrative. Nice. Okay. This we're gonna go to Sydney with that that question. What advice would you give to other autistic people? Just that if you're struggling in the world, take your time and let other people give a chance to get to know you better, to get to know you better, because they might not be able to like let them know you better and also know that you have autism or how are you going to survive in the world without people knowing that you have autism i'm hearing some autism pride there sydney beautiful <laughs> thank you for saying that and that's what this month is all about and every day actually should be about it's another another wise words um another set of wise words thank you let's go to um tarik and morgan uh, you know, a lot similar to, to Sam's. Um, there's a lot of similarities there. Uh, he said, take everything you hear with an open mind, but always question it. Don't let specialists and experts put you in a box. That There will be many things that they tell you amongst other people that you will not be able to do, but nobody really knows. Um, if an expert tries to tell you what you will or will not be able to do someday, they are not an expert. You're not always going to meet your goals, but always give it a go and see if it's possible. If you can at least get um, partway there even, it can be a success. Always think outside the box and what and what works best for you and what does not work. Um, if something doesn't work, just try different ways. We have to discover what works best for us as individuals. Um, you know, I, I, he had, I, as in he, Tarek, had goals of like driving a car. Um, he has not met that goal, but... He mows his five acres completely independently uh, on a tractor that he drives by himself. So there are ways that you can meet these goals in the middle, and he's working on some other other ones. It took him uh, over 15 years to learn to ride a two-wheeled bike and obey traffic laws. A lot of people would have given up long before then, but he was able to do it, and now he can do he can do all of that uh, without giving up and it was a long road to get there but like they say when there's a will there's a way yeah thank you thank you tarek um and and i want to say that that determination um has brought you so far and i it's it is really an inspiration truly tarek um that that in, your your stick to it power and your commitment and your tenacious, your tenacious man. Um, I wanted to call out too, I know Tark and Morgan and Tark will sometimes use text to speak and he also relies on, he, he and Morgan decide what they're gonna use. So this was Tark's decision to use Morgan as his voice today. They go back and forth. And I wanted to just, and so I just wanted to say that in case people were wondering, do you wanna say anything, Morgan? Yeah, I was just going to say that is something we always just talk about. It kind of depends on what we're doing. Uh, we I, we did think that this was going to be live. So mm -hmm. when we kind of are doing something together, we'll kind of write these up together just to switch it up because we've done questions and things like this uh, so many times. Just kind of allows us to talk more naturally. He kind of says what he thinks, and I kind of add to what he's saying, and he adds to what I'm saying. So that's why I'm switching between I and he and things like that. But this is, this again, this is, this is the way T wanted to do it. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely. Thank you. I 
I respect, you know, what he wants to do. You always do. And I just want to call it out in case anyone was curious, because that is the way you two work and it's very effective. Thank you. Um, and it honors what Tarek wants and, you know. Um, okay, uh, all right, Mr. Franco, you are next. And the question being, um, what advice would you give to other autistic people? All right, I think I remember being asked this when she, the last time I was in this panel, but I have some new advice this time for those who are still looking for a community or camaraderie. It's that <clears throat> looking for, like look for the right circles. Maybe the people who are like you, understand you or know you. And not all three are necessarily mutu mutually exclusive, but there's still <clears throat> strengths to each. And if you can find someone who's all three, e, then you may have that finally, that way out. So yeah, that's my advice this time. Excellent advice. Um, and I, I'm excited. We might have a little time at the end. And I, I, I just made a note to myself too. I do, Franco, I want, if, you, if you're okay with it, I, you had some really amazing skills that you shared with us the time I've heard you on another panel. So I might be asking you about those things you're really good at. Yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, and, and we all have skills and talents, but he's got some cool stuff. Okay, so we're going to go with Franco now. And, and the question I have next, and this is the last question. Um, and, and if we have time, we'll explore a few more things. But this was, this question is, what are some of your greatest strengths? This will probably get out of it, frankly, but what are your, some of your greatest strengths and skills and what you find most challenging? So it's skills and strengths, and, but what's hard for you in life? And what's hard for you? <clears throat> okay, well, for my skills and strengths, I'd say that I'm very determined. I, commit and the, and my but my greatest is that I'm adaptable kind of learn to listen I'm a kinesthetic learner who kind of goes by instinct but also very tries to use logic in many certain circumstances when I don't know that my kinesthetics won't <clears throat> won't get wouldn't get me far and um I guess being <clears throat> and I guess what's challenging for me is when like um, the struggle to kind of um, keep my focus in many new circumstances and trying to have my, um, like keep up in a socially competitive environment with, especially when it's um, with a neurotypical in a sense. So yeah, that's my, um, <clears throat> yeah, like keeping up and, and my perseverance or when the, when things can be as big for me the most. So that's my answer for that. Lovely. Again, if we had time, I'd love to hear about those accommodations that people make for you in this really demanding world of typically developing people who don't always understand what you need to be successful. So um, put that in your brain. And if we can get to it, sure love to hear that, really. Okay. Um, thank you, Franco. And I'm going to go to Morgan and Tarek next with that question about greatest strengths and skills and what you find most challenging. I like to believe that I have a lot of grit and determination. <clears throat> I've overcome a lot of challenges and reached and surpassed many goals that I've set for myself. The road to get there can be very tough and uncomfortable as well. Uh, things that are challenging for me today are being able to accurately and appropriately articulate my emotions and feelings sometimes. I also struggle with impulse control with my eating and certain other things that are not socially acceptable in the community. But I'm still working on these things and always striving for more independence. Thank you, Tarek. Wow. Um, I'm just going to say this. I've known Tarek since he was a young man, since he was a little baby, actually. He, he and my son were in the same class together, and I've known him forever. And Tarek, you have the best smile of all time, and I love seeing your smile today. <laughs> it's making me smile. Um, okay. All right. Sydney, strengths, skills, and challenges. So my greatest strength are I remember certain... I think we got an echo. Somebody turn off their mic. There we go. 
So my greatest strengths are I remember certain facts and dates. I'm hardworking, dependable, and I am driven and desirable to go after my goals in life. Um, for the last 14 years, I've gone after my goals, but they were, there were a few bumps and challenges along the way. And I, there were moments where I thought about giving up, but I didn't because of my perseverance and determination is what made me who I am today and what I reach in my, in my life. Like for in, example, it took me almost 30 years to get an apartment because this was a goal of mine ever since I've lived in Alaska, but it was expensive. So I was very fortunate enough to find an apartment that was low housing income and would take my rent. Sydney, thank you so much. Are you? Are, I, did I interrupt you? Were you done? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, I got so excited to say um, how cool that was. And each of you three so far, I'm hearing grit, determination, commitment, and a heck of a lot of hard work. So, wow, that's pretty amazing. Um, thank you for sharing that. That was excellent. That was just really insightful and, and um, impressive. Okay, let's go to Sam. Sam, why don't you go ahead and tell us about some of your great strengths, skills, and what you find most challenging. Sorry, go ahead. Restart that already. I'm sorry. I am very good at swimming. I can do complex puzzles. I can guess Bollywood songs in seconds. I am most regulated during my college classes because I love to learn new things, especially history. I like to travel, explore new places. I like to just chill. I hang out only with close group of friends, but I really enjoy their company. I consider myself a good man that has found his purpose in life with a good sense of humor and attitude towards life. But I have high anxiety about everything. I sometimes cannot control my impulses. I am a big guy and a proxy and can look ugly and scary to others. I am seeking the help of OT, neurologist, and my caregivers to help guide me. I aim to get over some of these challenges soon so I can study and travel more. Maybe even have a girlfriend. Thank you, Sam. Um, I think, Sam, you need to write a book, my friend. Um, very, pretty, pretty amazing. And all of you, truly, this each could have a chapter about this topic alone. Um, thank you. Well, folks, we, we can end early, but I do want to I do want to ask a few questions here because I I'm sure a lot of our viewers are curious about a few things. One of them, I, I thought back to what Tarek said about how you advocate for yourself, that you do advocate for yourself. And and Tarek, if I, what I might do is get you thinking about it. You and Morgan can maybe work out your answer while I ask Franco and anybody else to tell me in this tip, world of typically developing people of, of, of you know, um, where your skills and talents might not always come through or you face more challenges because of who you are and what your essence is and your identity. What do you do? What, what, do you, what kind of accommodations do you need to be treated equally or be, you know, um, to get the dignity you deserve and be included? What accommodations, what help do you need from the world to make you equal? Let you think about that for a second. Franco, do you want to answer, take a stab at that? Answer that? Oh, your volume, got to turn up your volume there. Thank you. I Well, I never really ask or try to really look for accommodations when I'm dealing with a social circumstance, like from my friends or anything. I um, I get, I decide I get what I get from them and wherever and however that goes. But when it comes to like school, like maybe I'll need longer time, longer test taking time or, Maybe I'll ask the teacher to repeat some stuff at, when I um, miss something. It's kind of those areas of um, of when I kind of feel like I need my needs met the most. Thank you. I, it's interesting you said that you don't expect accommodations when you're with your friends because that's kind of free flowing and you are who you are, right? But yes. that, but those things like extended test taking time. That's a reasonable accommodation, isn't it? To make to make it work for you. 
And we all have to, as, as, as typically developing people, we always have to be asking you folks what you need to make the world equal for you and anticipating that too. Mm-hmm. Looking closely at how you're doing in the world and changing ourselves rather than making you change. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. Um, Sydney, do you have any thoughts about, and then I'll turn to Tark, any thoughts about how the world can accommodate you so you can be the best person and you can have equality and inclusion? Honestly, um, when I'm with my friends, I don't need accommodations. But when I'm in the past, when I'm looking for a job and I need and I tell people about my autism, I feel like they could be more accessible and more accommodating with that. And also when I was in school, high school, I wish people would give me the chance to show what I can do in the classroom because I felt like I had to hide my autism and because I was afraid other kids would get, would tease me or I would get bullied. So I didn't tell them for years. And also I wish there would be more accessible accommodations for people with autism and more inclusion in the community for people just to allow them to be proud of of who they are well said exactly um sydney uh, uh, were you going to continue saying something i i I liked how you ended but i I, if there was something else you were going to say i want to make sure you said nope that was it yep Thank you. Beautiful. And Um, Franco, do you have your hand up? Yeah, I definitely want to speak to that about finding a job too. I use use DVR every chance I get when I'm trying to um, find something for me in the workforce because whenever I try on my own, it never really, it's like I never sent an application or resume. So I felt like I need them to kind of speak on that behalf. Got it. And Franco, do you mind telling us what ORL stands for? That's a school at Bellevue College community or Bellevue College. What's that stand for again? It, it OLS, occupational life skills is what it's called. And that's it. Yes, Bellevue College. Got it. That's a that's a program people might be want to look into. Um, you found it very successful for yourself. And I hear a lot of good things about that program. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, well, Tarek and uh, Morgan, then I'll call on you, Sam, if you if you had time to put something together. Um, any thoughts about, I, I asked you know, a little about how you advocate for yourself, and if you want to say anything about how you, you want the world to accommodate you so you feel equal. Yeah, for, for, I asked if for whatever reason he, he did not have, he did not want to say anything. He said that, um, he asked me to say something. Um, I would say as far, as far as the world accommodations, I think that it doesn't necessarily need to make special treatment. I think they can meet in the middle on a lot of things. Like for for an example, it definitely when the world accommodates, it can work against. Think it can it can have a detriment effect on things T's try to accomplish. Like for instance, uh, when he said he struggles with impulse control sometimes, sometimes like his favorite drink or something like that. When he's grocery shopping mm-hmm. and it's not a day where he's getting his favorite drink, but they got an end cap on the way out the door, he'll grab one. And we all know how, uh, you know, a neurotypical person would be treated to, to doing something like that. And then he, he can get let off the hook sometimes because somebody might realize he's, he's autistic or he's of a neurodiverse community. And that is definitely a, a positive reinforcement of uh, inappropriate behavior. And, and, and one of the things I love about Tarek is that he'll admit, even though he wants that drink and he couldn't control his impulses, that it is best for him for him to not get that special treatment. Now, when I say they can meet in the middle, do I want him arrested every time he does this to have those natural consequences? Well, no. Um, so, so I guess that would be an accommodation, but he should it should still definitely be a a, a, a negative treatment towards that. And then, as far as advocating for himself, I mean that the you know he calls us all a team. We all call ourselves part of his team. And, and he handpicks the pieces like uh, like his mom found 30 people when she was looking for somebody to work with Tark. Tark, she narrowed it down to four and then T picked one out of the four. And that's how T and I came together. So he's he's always first on the front lines picking his team. And when he does not like somebody that he is, uh, which has happened, we we deal with that. 
and we, we figure that out and we always customize whatever Tarek has going on in his life and he always has full uh full he's free for all his input and we, we all respect it i'm hearing that Tarek, and i and i kudos to your parents for including you in the decision making you are the person that's receiving these services and they've always deferred to you. And um, I also just want to thank you for bringing up the fact that we can overfunction or assume what you need, but yet, you know, you, you, um, you know, I'm glad that you said that about we, we have, we, as parents and caregivers and people who work with autistic people can't always let you off the hook because you're autistic. You are asking us not to let you off the hook. Thank you. Um, Sam, did Sam you type? Oh, yeah, okay, Sam typed ahead. in, sir. Uh, he uses protocol for text. I need a lot of sensory help and input during the day. But one-to-one -one support is always helpful. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for, and thank you everyone for letting me ask these questions at the end. That wasn't expected, but y'all flowed with it. And thank you. I, I could not ask them because you brought up such important points about who you are and what you need in this world. Um, you know, I wish this was live because I know there's a bunch of questions people would have for you. I think I'll just end with saying um, that we have your, you know, you have our respect and you have our, um, we commend you. Uh, you know, you're not heroes because that's not what we're trying to say. We're just saying that you're really impressive human beings working hard in this world. And, and uh, as someone who's typically developing, I'm sorry when the world's hard and it lets you down. Um, please keep telling us what you need and want to be treated equally, to reach your goals. Um, and you're an inspiration to parents whose maybe children aren't communicating or, or they're having a hard time understanding what they're telling us. Um, you know, intellectual impairment is part of autism sometimes. A certain percent of people that are intellectually that are autistic are intellectually impaired. Doesn't mean everybody is, okay? But the ones that are and their parents are doing the best to understand them, they're feeling inspired by you because what you share helps them understand their own child better, okay? What you're saying matters a lot to everyone in the world of autism, not just other autistics, but to parents, professionals, advocates, therapists, medical folks, the world, and, and advocates who speak on your behalf, and you speak on your behalf too. So thank you for that. And before we leave, um, uh, is there anything anybody wants to close with or say? Let this end with your words, not mine. Uncomfortable silence. Katrina's... <laughs> I'm begging you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You don't have to if you don't want to. That's a lot. Is Tark typing, Morgan? Oh, I think, okay. So if I if I know Tark, he's saying something. He's, he's saying he doesn't have anything to add. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Sydney, been, you too, Franco? It's been fun to do this. Glad to have this discussion here. Yeah, and I just want to say that thank you for the opportunity for allowing us to speak this afternoon, Katrina. Mm -hmm. Our pleasure and our, our honor. Um, Sam? This was great. Thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome, Sam. Thank you. Okay, good people. We're going to end this on a beautiful sunny day. And um, thank you to our uh, viewers. And please check out other conversation about autism third Thursday of each month. Take care, everyone. And thanks again.